When France fell to Germany in May 1940, Britain was left standing alone. Well, sort of alone. Alone in the sense of it was only Britain and all of its empire remaining in the fight. Irrespective, the United Kingdom's position at that point wasn't exactly enviable and there were many politicians there who thought the fighting on was foolish. So, given Britain's outlook at this point, this raises the question. Why didn't Britain make peace after the fall of France? So, as you'll know, 1940 saw the German invasion of Denmark, Norway, the Benelux region and France, and to put it mildly, things didn't go well for the Allies. After the fall of Norway, Britain's Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain was under a lot of pressure to resign and there were two candidates to succeed him. Lord Halifax, who said no, thus narrowing it down to only one candidate, Winston Churchill. During this time, the British government was divided as to whether or not it should continue the war. So far, things hadn't exactly gone well and the odds only seemed to be getting worse and worse. This was mostly because France was faring poorly at this point, which threw the British strategy of letting the French get punched in the face until Britain could arm and train up an army of about one and a half million men and send them to the continent, which was planned for about 1942. With France about to fall, Lord Halifax pushed to make peace and negotiate via Mussolini's government. This wasn't because Halifax thought that Britain was going to be conquered and mostly put in charge or something, but because he didn't think that any victory was worth a World War I-style war of attrition. As you'll know, Halifax's proposals went nowhere, but why was that the case? There were several reasons. The first was that Churchill and many in government didn't trust any treaty that Hitler was willing to sign. Furthermore, one of Germany's conditions for peace was the return of its former African and Asian colonies, which was not something that the Allies were willing to countenance. The second reason was that British military leadership was confident that they could, at worst, push Germany to a stalemate, and at best last until the German economy collapsed just like in World War I. So for them, it was simply a case of keeping public morale up and not bankrupting the country by keeping the sea lanes open. This opinion was solidified when Italy joined the war and Britain decided to focus on Italy, the idea being that just like Austria-Hungary in the last world war, Germany would constantly have to bail them out. The third reason was that Britain was confident that Germany would eventually do something silly like invade the Soviet Union or do something that would pull the United States into the war. This wasn't due to some hunch, but because Britain and Polish codebreakers had heard it from the Germans themselves. And to help secure support from the US, Britain was sure to fight the war on as many fronts as possible. For example, by quickly sending troops to Greece when it was invaded. This wasn't because they thought they could stop its fall, but because it made it clear that they were the ones defending smaller nations' independence or on the side of international stability, which would indirectly put pressure on American politicians to eventually do something. Britain's leadership didn't believe that it could conventionally defeat Germany but that it simply had to hold out until about 1942 until Germany made a mistake, which it did in 1941 and soon afterwards its ally Japan did the same, bringing two monumental allies into the conflict and tipping the scales. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thanks to my patrons James Bizanet, Kelly Moneymaker, Marvin Cassow, Mo, Aaron the White, James Castaneda, Marcus Arsner, Jordan Longley, Gustav Swan, Rashid Ali, Jerry Lambden, Maggie Paskowski, Copper Tone, Winston Kaywood, Spencer Lightfoot, Robert Wetzel, Spinning Three Plates, Corsho Wolf, Matthew Shipley, Anthony Beckett and Charles I.